My latest book just, in fact, came out. Um, it's called Unshadowed Light, light from which the shadow has been taken. So it's a collection of poetry I wrote last year in Scotland, in um, a big castle, uh, in fact, owned by, I don't know, here in India. You know, there's a very famous brand of ketchup, and it's the widow of Heinz Ketchup who bought a medieval castle, and they invite every year uh, writers to stay there one month just writing you know so actually there was once an indian lady too whom who i met a few i was there twice you know so the, the last one was um shadow client it's a uh, it's a little bit again philosophical poetry you know so that's uh, that makes my poetry a little bit uh, special i mean special in europe you know i suppose in india you have more meditative poetry um, than we have in Europe, you know. But, um, you know, I started uh, here in India with, uh, with philosophical poetry, you know, so, and I kept going on. So my last but one poetry book was written as well in the Indian Himalayas um, called In the Stream of Time, Meditations in the Himalayas. And before that one was also written in India called The Root. So the influence of India, in fact, is, is very important in, uh, in my poetry, including in my, in my last poetry book. So this poem is, uh, the title is Feelings of Spring. You recognized spring by its green and by the psalms of the birds so high there in the air. And you invented things which had been forgotten so long, painted images with the twinkling light, not only of the morning dew, but also of the dream. Maybe one more from the same book. Oh, and you, you wanted to hear it in Dutch, right? Or Flemish, as we say. Lente gevoelens. Je herkende de lente aan haar groen en aan de psalmen van de vogel zo hoog daar in de lucht. En je bedacht weer dingen die lang vergeten waren. Schilder de beelden met glinsterlicht, niet alleen van de ochtendtoon, maar ook van de droom. When I was very, very, very young, um, I started with short stories, you know. So, um, and I published also short stories before. And I, um, I wrote. I uh, have been a journalist. I wrote uh, also about generally about travel stories. So, in, for example, I was in Bali. I was in the Philippines, the primitives of the Philippines. Um, and um, I think I started writing poetry when I was maybe 18, 20 years old, not uh, more or less like that. But I, I did not really go seriously into poetry, you know. Uh, I think I had, uh, as a poet, a quite late debut, you know. I, um, I think I was, my first book of poetry published was called 40 at the Wall. So just before becoming 40 years old, you see like a sign on the wall, you know, you're getting 40, so what to do? And um, as a Chinese saying goes, you know, you, to be successful in life, you need to have a son, you must have built a house, and you must have written a book. So I had the house, I had a son, but I had not written a book of poetry. You know, I had many publications, short stories and travel stories and some poems here and there, but not really a book, you know. So that's actually pretty late that I started with uh, writing poetry. In the meantime, I have 11 books of poetry. And like the road written here is published in 24 countries so far, you know, so in, including, as I told you, uh, published in Hindi and uh, Malayalam and uh, in Bengal. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, because a, a quite famous German uh, poet, whom I have translated, because I must also translate and publish of poetry, by the way, uh, so he said uh, his poetry is always very short. And I had an interview with him, and I asked him, Mr. Kunze, you know, your poems are always very short. Is there a reason for it? He replied to me, be careful. It is not because my poetry is short that I worked less hard on it than my colleagues. They became short because I worked hard and harder, you know. And, you know, I think especially in uh, modern times now, so maybe it's a little bit different in India, but in, at least in the Western world, in Europe, 
I think everything is shot in life. You know, the shots, publicity, everything is shot. So I think when a poem is too long, I think you must be a very, very good poet to write a good long poem. You know, because generally people get lost. You know, when you're halfway, they lose attention. You know, so so when it's shot, it's like a shock. You know, I can give you a few a few examples. So my so far my most famous book, The Road, written in Rajasthan here, Nimrana. Um, I just wanted to make a kind of poetic bridge between the West and the East. That's why it is called the road in Chinese Tao. So um, the first part is Western, with the reference to Greek mythology, is the past. Then there are some poems which are a little bit critical, that's the present. And then the last part is Asia, because I believe Asia is the future, and I think I said this already 30 years ago, and I think when we see economically India, Brazil, China, you know, that's what, what is coming now, right? Um, so I had, the first part is a little bit negative, it's also yin-yang, the second part is positive. I needed a short poem to, to bridge from the negative to the positive. And there was it's a very famous Italian poet, Ungaretti, he had a very short poem, which in, in Italian it's mattinata, mi lumino dimenso, means morning, I get illuminated by the immensity. You know, I said this morning comes there. So in the short poem, you see this whole morning coming. I was jealous of that poem. So I said, I must read, write something very short that is also powerful. So that short poem is, there is no shadow larger than its light. So it's super short, it's even shorter than a haiku. So when I was in, um, on a poetry festival, invited in, uh, I was at in, in, in Hungary, uh, on, and I, I went there from Slovakia. So in Bratislava I took the train, and next to me was a lady sitting. So finally she asked me, okay, where, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to a poetry festival in Budapest. I said, oh, do you like poetry? She said, well, no, I like reading, but not really poetry, because I don't understand, it's too good. I said, but what kind of poetry are you writing? I said, well, since I'm reading poetry in many languages, you know, I know very few by heart. But at that point, said, there is no shadow larger than its light. So finally, you know, I gave her my, because she said, well, I like your poetry. Okay, I gave her my name card. Two months later, I got an email. She said, I just had a bad period in my life. There is no shadow larger than its light. And that poem gave me light. The same happened to me in many countries, with the very same poem, you see? Because it's, there's a whole philosophy in it. When you feel down, you know, when you're in the darkness, you must say, the light is always more important than the darkness. Because the light can make shadow, but the shadow cannot make light. So even when you are in the shadow, you should know there must be light somewhere. You know, so this, in a few lines, you have a whole philosophy. Well, in a great part, yes, you know, because my first poetry books were more nature related. Uh, of course, as most poets, I wrote also some, some love poetry. But it was especially uh, my, my Indian guru, you know, he's not a guru, you know, but he's, a, he's an excellent painter, Satish Gupta, and also he writes poetry, and he's, he's a Zen Buddhist. So we met, I met him 30 years ago. And since then, uh, you know, we have become good friends. So each time I come to, to India, to Delhi, he picks me up from the airport and I stay in his house. And I say, Satish, what are the latest books you have read? And he gives me his books and I go to some place in India just to write, you know, with his recent books. And he actually, he, he, inf he, he brought to me Buddhism, Taoism, you know, all these books. So now my poetry, since the road, it's very much influenced by Asian philosophies. You know, and that I owe to my Indian friend. You know? So let's say my, the change in my poetry, which st started with the road, uh, after the road I have counter light, which means the real light, counter the fake light, uh, then in the stream of time, and then unshadowed light. So light plays uh, an important uh, part. But it is because of my Indian friend who, who brought me into that, that uh, since the last four books, my poetry became very philosophic and, you know, it's uh, the advantage of that kind of poetry is that 
it is easier to pass borders. You see, when I come to India, uh, when the, the road was launched, they say it's similar to Tagore because it's a little bit philosophy poetry. When in China, they say it's Tao. In Japan, they say it's Zen. In, in the Arab world, they say it's Sufi, you know, because it's philosophical poetry, you know, and the, philosoph the philosophic ideas are universal. You see, so in, even in translation, as Robert Frost said, you know, poetry is what gets lost in translation. But when the idea is philosophic, the idea remains, so it does not get lost, you know, so that's very important. No, I, I think what, uh, what might be different in, in my poetry from what is being written in, in, in Europe, for example, or, or in Belgium, you know, where I was born. Actually, I'm living in Spain already 27 years, so I'm considered also a Mediterranean poet, you know. But uh, the difference is that, uh, you see, in, um, in the Western world at this moment, you know, well, it's not at this moment, it's already going on a long time. I think we are rushing, you know, we're always going on. And we never stop and think about the past. And I think this I, I, I learned that long time ago from, from Asia when I was in China, you know, that you know, including Indian people, you are more meditative than, than Western people, you know. And I think that's very important. We we cannot say whatever is new is better. Of course we cannot say we must do all what what is done in the past. But I think once in a while you know, you must start thinking. And with my poetry, I, I try to bring a kind of meditation. You see, when I was uh, invited, as, uh, I was actually leading a, a poetry workshop in Ireland. And one of those ladies I had said, hey, a poem, it's not bad, but it's a little bit too long. I said, you should write with white. And she asked me, write with white? <laughs> Race. You know, and then it becomes more stronger. Because then, you see, when everything is painted, there's nothing new anymore. But when you can put a little bit of yourself into the poetry, then the, po the poem becomes much stronger. No, no not, not really. You know, in, uh, uh, in Spain for, for the moment, we have a kind of um, what they call poetry of experience. You know? So I would not say that there's bad poetry, but you know, it's like a short story. But when you know the story, it's over. You know, you're not going to read it twice because you know the story. You see, so the, what I'm trying, you know, and that's the difference with this, this kind of more philosophical poetry, is that each time you read it, at the first glance it seems simple, but at the second, you read it a second time and you discover something new. And you read it a third time and, and you have some feeling that there is still something more in it. And then you can read it ten times. It doesn't matter, you know. So I think that's very important, that you have a kind of poetry which doesn't say everything at the same time, you know. It's, I think it's, it's like a beautiful woman, you know. If she undresses immediately, it's, the show is over, you know. But it's going very slowly, you know, it gets, you, know you, you want to see more, you know. And I think the same is with the poem.